you'll see when it comes time to, to press apart, the, uh, the frame comes down through the gear drives. Here we have a, a geared shaft to be straightened. You see the hammer at the top, and there will be two handles underneath. That hammer will come down and press the part to straighten it. Is it actually straightening now or it's not straightening because it's No, they are already. Yeah. The, this is fully automatic. The first thing it does when it sees a part, it spins a part, it measures the run out or the straightness of the part through the probes underneath. If it's not straight, it's, it, pardon me, if, it's, if it needs no straightening, the, the, the computer control says it's good and it sends it out in good parts. You'll see on this one, there's a red box moving behind it. That's a laser measuring system. Uh, this has been on the market for, what, two, two and a half years. It's field tested. It's actually faster than using master gears. If you're familiar with gear measuring, to measure the run out, oftentimes it's a customer requirement to measure on the actual pitch diameter of the gears. To do that precisely, normally you'll have expensive and bulky master gears. To, to mesh them in and measure the run out. With this laser gear technique, with this laser measurement, you don't need the expensive master gears, and that saves quite a bit of money uh, if you have several parts, because a different part will require a different master gear in changing it out, and this is not necessary on this system. Does anyone have any questions so far on this? I don't want to go into too much technical detail. Yeah, one quick question. Uh -huh. When it measures run out, it detects the high spot. How does it, how does it yeah. know where to where the handle or the position the handle? Yeah, it, it, as the shaft is spinning, there's a probe underneath it, and if, if there's a run out, the probe will be pushed down. Okay. Right? If it's if there's no run out, it's spinning, the probe is standing still. So yes, it, it'll detect where there's a where there's a high spot, then it will bring the high spot to the top, and then it can press that with the hammer. How high, how high or how tight to get a straight in two? How much out there? Run. There's a question on how much incoming run out can the machine accept? Well, that depends on the work piece and on the material. That's so I, no, on the, on the on the alloy diameter, the shape. So we have customers with wood pieces with the initial run of three, four millimeters. Uh, we have wood pieces with twenty millimeters run out. So that depends on the shape, the alloy. Yeah, absolutely. This has a full reflex uh, automatic changeover between parts. You can put a shaft, uh, one family of shaft in, and then if you bring a new family in, different lengths, different diameters, different straightening requirements, this, using the lasers and the CNC drives, will automatically move the centers, it will move the measuring, measuring points, as well as the hammer and anvil, automatically set up for the next part. This is quicker than a manual setup by a number of minutes, but most importantly, this removes the human element from the, the, the setup. We've had some customers just falling all over themselves when they hear about this because just because of human error, they'll have eight hours of production. At the end of the eight hours, they realize someone had made a mistake and this is all scrap. And so this, this eliminates that. It's using the laser to see where the equipment uh, is. <laughs> and this can this can match any level of factory automation. Many manufacturers will have a full factory information system. Their parts are individually marked. You can uh, use laser scanners to read that part number. Enters into the computer, set it up according to that part or the part family, straighten it, records the information, sends it out, 
and then that information can be uploaded automatically to the, to the factory information system on the floor, or if they don't have the connections, they can come down after every shift, after every day, week, month, or whatever, to download the, the data. The data is not only saying how much the how straight the part is, but how many strokes and the depth of each stroke that was used to straighten the part. That kind of information can also be used internally by the people using the straightener. If they see that they're suddenly taking more time to straighten a certain part, they can use that for problem resolution, maybe there's a problem with the heat treat, the earlier process. So in a given production run, I mean, is, is, is it that 100% of you know, steering shafts need to be straightened, or is it a percentage of them? I mean, it, 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 can, it can vary very greatly. I've seen a lot of customers will have 80% need straight. Some customers only 20%. But even customers that have their processes down very good, right, and they, they have a very excellent heat treatment for their processes, and they're not straightening anything by their own customers, let's say the automotive right, people, they're required to have straightening there just in case. And this, this can actually just be a measurement device. You can load it in, spin it, measure it, confirm that it's straight, which they can then document to their customers and send it out as a good part. Additionally, we're, we're partnered with Quas Crack Detection. On the Quas, it's, it's a sonic device, you see it on there, as you're pressing a part, especially a hardened part, if it cracks during the straightening process, during the pressing, it picks that, that noise up and it says, this is, a, this is a cracked part. Once it's tuned in, it, and, and, and uh, the automotive suppliers, if it's a 30 cent part and it's cracked, they don't care. They toss it, they set it in the reject bin, and it goes out. If it's a $500,000 aerospace part and it cracks, they usually go into emergency stop. So there's no more turning, no movement whatsoever going on. So everyone can come in, see exactly where it cracked, look at the process, look upstream, why did this crack when we were straight? After they wipe away the tears for this amazing $50,000 part. I'm sorry? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, any other questions on this? I'd like to mention on the hydraulic straighteners, both the small ones, as well as the 2,000, 2,500 ton straightening presses that are used in the steel industry, they all have a patented BiPAC control system. It's very green and saves a lot of energy. All other hydraulic presses worldwide, the hydraulic pump is pumping oil the entire time. When you, when you then give the command to move the, the hammer, there's a diverter valve to pump oil this way or, or that way. In this one, the pump is not running. It's not heating up the hydraulic fluid. You're not then required to cool the hydraulic fluid. Rather, it's just sitting there. When you tell the, when, when the operator or the CNC control tells the, the hammer to come down or, or to come up, a, a, servo, a servo motor moves, indexes, moves the fluid. And then when, when you're coming up, for instance, on a 14 inch steel bar, you flex down, as you raise the hammer, there's a bit of flex. And that flex pushes the hammer up, that pushes the fluid back through the servo motor. The servo motor then turns in reverse, feeds electrical energy back into the, into the grid, which is to be used again or sold back to the supplier. All in all, this BiPAC control system saves 80% on the energy costs of running the hydraulic straightener. And for a large 1,000, 2,000 ton press, that can be tens of thousands of dollars. Tens of thousands of dollars. So, so actually the MAE has been developing these systems over the past 30, 40 years. They have a very deep technical bench. They can just
once while there's a little break in the action, I'm Tim Darrow from the PR agency. On your chair is a bag with some lovely party gifts, uh, all the print materials, and then a memory stick that has literature, word docs, JPEGs, and videos on all these machines for you. So if, uh, before you go, grab your bag and please give me your business card. But uh, you're welcome to stick around and ask more questions and watch the machines in action. And thank you all very much for coming. You know, it's a busy day. Yeah, they, they have quite a size of operation in Mexico. Yes. Right. What's the action? Yes.